Yumba, which means hello in Ngunnawal. For those of you that don't know me, I am Caroline Hughes, director of CIT's Urana Centre, the Centre of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Excellence at Canberra Institute of Technology. I am also one of many Ngunnawal elders that have the cultural privilege and right to provide welcome to country on behalf of our Ngunnawal community. Before I go further, I would like to acknowledge other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that may be watching this film. And I also pay respect to your elders, both past and present, and emerging leaders. I also acknowledge you, our many non-Indigenous friends, that are also watching this film. And I pay respect to you and your ancestors. Providing welcome to country is an important tradition that all Australians should participate in. So in the words of my ancestors, Yuma Yumalundi, Nanayirabi Krulili Manangai, which means hello and welcome to Ngunnawal country. Or in other words, you may leave your footprints on our land. Thank you. Welcome to the world premiere of Pressure Cooker, the show that pits student chefs in a race against time over four massive weeks of competition. They're not competing for money or prizes, no such trivialities. They're here to win the most important thing of all, and that's respect. I'm your host, Chris Endry, and this is Pressure Cooker. Here on Pressure Cooker, we have two teams competing, Team Yvonne and Team Brad. Each team has two student chefs working alongside their teachers. Each week, they'll have to create a menu with a secret theme and a secret ingredient, but they won't know what either of them are until it's time to get cooking. The teams will go head to head with just one hour to plan, cook and serve up perfection. Their hard work will be judged by industry professionals from across the Canberra region. It's up to them to decide who makes the cut and who gets the chop. Now, it's time to meet our teams. First up, Chef Yvonne. My name is Yvonne and I teach um, Start 3 Commercial Cookery at CIT. So we've got Clyde in our team and Sam, and yet they don't actually know each other until today, So, but I think they're going to work well together. It'll be good. Let's see what Team Yvonne has to say about today's contest. I, I want to know what the secret ingredient is. I want to get my hands on that. Plus there is another team that we have to compete on, so you're not really relaxed, so you have to keep an eye on. Now to meet the competition, Chef Brad. My name's Brad and uh, I teach Cert 3 commercial cookery here at CIT. Um, I've got Coco and Narian, and um, yeah, I think we work um, really, really well as a team. Um, they uh, they'll complement each other really quite well um, and they obviously the first time they've met because they're in separate classes so yeah so I think we um, we should give a good showing today. A team Brad ready to take on the challenge? I am nervous about the ingredient the secret ingredient even more because um, in Australia they have a lot of ingredients that we don't have back home in Colombia. It's all about the learning today we are looking for something new something we can we are trying to create a dish that will really put a smile on everyone's face. No competition would be complete without its judges. Let's meet ours. First up is our head judge, Shelley. Shelley's acting head of CIT's Culinary Skills Department. Hi, I'm Shelley Flatt. I'm the acting head of department for Culinary Skills Department at CIT. I'd always liked cooking. I tended to be the one at home who cooked dinner. Um, my parents were both working and busy and my older sister was uh, working as well. So when I got home from school, I was the one home in the afternoon, so I tended to cook dinner. So that kind of ignited my, my passion for starting to cook. I actually started my apprenticeship when I was 25 years old, which is a little bit late for a lot of apprentices. Um, unusual, some might say, um, but I was working full time before then. When I was an apprentice, I entered the Southern Cross Club Apprentice of the Year competition, 
and won that year, which was fantastic. I got uh, 10 days over in Hong Kong doing a study tour of all the places over there. It's good to be on the other side when you're judging. I think it's a lot easier than being an actual student in a competition. It's very nerve wracking when you're a student in a competition. Here's Judge Mal, head chef of the new fine dining restaurant, Pilot. My name's Mal, um, I'm the head chef and we're at Pilot Restaurant in Ainsley. When you're a chef, you can't be half in, half out. You've got to just be 100%, this is what I'm doing and you've just got to go for it. Passion and just dedicate yourself to it and, and just focus on what you're doing and your job, then it becomes so much easier. It's a great environment, it doesn't even feel like work. I don't know, it's never really felt like work for me. You just got to cook delicious food, it's easy to make a dish look good, but it's got to taste good. That's yeah. like, that's the number one thing. I run a hugely team-based kitchen. I've got really great staff and they've got ideas too. And if they come to me with an idea and I can be like, I'll teach you how to make that. And I can impart some of my knowledge onto them. Then they get to grow and then they become stronger chefs out of it. And it makes me a stronger chef too, because they're coming with like ideas that I'd never have. I sometimes feel like I'm only just learning now. And last but not least, Judge Andrew. I'm the general manager of the CIT Student Association. So the Student Association is an independent part of CIT, but is obviously works really closely with CIT and ultimately enhancing the student experience. I am really passionate about um, inspiring change. And I think not, not because change has happened just to make things different. It's because I think when you give that people that opportunity to in, um, support change and when you encourage people to support change, you get the best out of people. I have a lot of hobbies outside of work. Um, one of the ones that probably the most continual for me is around sports and sports officiating. Officiating is something that I do on a weekly basis. So whether it's been officiating in cricket, I've had the privilege of being involved with the Prime Minister's 11. I'm still a current um, high performance cricket umpire in Canberra at the moment. I also help out with AFL Canberra's umpires. I really enjoy umpiring for because one, it's a great place to watch sport. It's a great place to um, to spend time with people engaging something they're really passionate around. My sort of motto in life is that we all have a role to play and I like finding a space that I like to enjoy so that other people can do what they like to enjoy. I think the best part about Pressure Cooker for, for me is the fact it's a collaboration of a whole set of student um, outcomes at CIT, whether it's around the people behind the camera, whether it's the people in front of the camera, whether it's also the, the people that are involved in the cooking. The idea that CIT can showcase what is excellent about CIT's training and education, but also what amazing students we have, as soon as I found out about it, I was continually asking anyone who was anyone to sort of find out how I could be involved. And the opportunity to become a judge was just something I couldn't refuse. Let's discover this week's secret ingredient that both teams will need to work with. Really excited today, last day of truffle season here at Terra Preta Truffles. Let's go meet the owners, Pete and Kate. Morning, Kate. Good morning, Brad. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Peter. Hi, Brad. Welcome to Terra Preta. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited about uh, going on a truffle hunt today. Well, so are the dogs, so let's get going. No Come worries. on through. Thank you. Come on through. This is a particularly good region for truffles um, and we've now been um, harvesting for quite a number of years so we've learnt a lot. We use no herbicides and no pesticides, we hand weed and we try and make the environment appropriate for the organism we're growing rather than necessarily making a very industrialised farm. We're a family farm and we work on a family scale. Each member of the family has something to do and we all have to pitch in in truffle time because it's very intense, it's hard work. This looks promising. Should I come? Should I look? Look? Should I this way? Oh, buddy. Looking. Where's it like? Looking, looking. Oh, good boy! Oh, boy. It's great to be able to sell directly to people in Canberra through the farmer's market at Epic. We enjoy doing that. Our captains now have their secret ingredient for today. However, it needs to be matched with a secret theme too. Judge Shelley will now announce our secret theme. The theme today is... Breakfast. Truffles and breakfast. Interesting combination. Yvonne and Brad have just one hour with their teams to impress our judges. It's time to love the heat and get into the kitchen. So, 
what I'm thinking is they asked for some innovations, so we're going to do a sort of traditional, um, traditional dish. So the the hot asparagus poached egg hollandaise but we're going to put some truffles through the hollandaise yeah. and then the asparagus we're going to make them into little toasted short soldiers. First up, Chef Yvonne. My name is Yvonne and I teach commercial cookery at CIT. Originally I'm from Scotland. I've been in Australia since 1996 but only in Canberra for four years. I have an eight-year-old boy who keeps me very busy. We used to live in Cairns. We lived in Cairns for quite a long time before we came here. And I worked in a couple of places in Palm Cove, which is just on the beaches north of Cairns. And then um, I was a bit tired, ordering all the work. So I sold seafood for two years. And then I went, oh, maybe I'll go work at tea. So that's what I did. I've got a bucket list of things I want to complete for work. I've got a bucket list of things I want to complete for me. I've got a bucket list of mountain bike races. I've got a bucket list of all the countries I haven't been to yet. I don't really wish to be anywhere else. Maybe not at work today, it's a beautiful day outside. Maybe I'd like to be out riding my bike somewhere nice away from everybody else, that would be good. So we'll blanch the asparagus, then we'll panny them, yeah. and then we'll fry them, so they're the bread. And then we've got the poached egg, and Fantastic. then the truffle and herbs it's through the savvy on over the top, like sort of like a hollandaise. Poaching eggs, I hate poaching eggs. So, <laughs> they sort of shove the eggs off to me, and I'm like, oh, please don't make me do this. <laughs> yeah, no. And then the other part will be the quesadilla. So, we've got some jalapenos. We're going to make um, ques sort of traditional chicken cheese uh, quesadillas, but we'll put the truffle through because the truffle goes well with the cheese. Oh, wow. The eggs and Cream, creamy things like yeah. Yeah, chef. Take, what, uh, take on the flavour of the truffles. So. Yeah, chef. That'd be nice. cool. Asparagus for me was stalks that they planted in Turkish farms to keep the birds away, so it wasn't food. <laughs> and then when my dad bought it home and started cooking with it, I'd always question, why are you cooking the stalks? Aren't they rubbish? <laughs> Let's catch up with a student chef. My name is Senam Emre. Uh, I am currently completing a Australian apprenticeship to become a chef. I'm doing this through CIT as my provider. I currently live in Canberra. I am originally from Melbourne, born and raised. My favourite food is predominantly burdik. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it is a Turkish filled pastry and it tastes incredible. I absolutely love to make it and I absolutely love to eat it. From what I understand, there's going to be quite a lot of mystery ingredients thrown our way in terms of our challenges and I really like doing things that are quite out of the box and not knowing what I'm being thrown into. It's just a little bit of adrenaline that comes in with the, you know, with being in the kitchen environment and I really, really am looking forward to that. The time management is a big thing in the kitchen and we can do things very well very quickly. Uh, having that added element of a mystery box and a mystery container and mystery ingredients uh, is going to be very difficult to manage and I think it's going to be a challenge. I believe that there's a lot of achievements in life but my biggest one by far I think is uh, having the courage to walk away from my very long banking and finance career uh, right at the brink of a promotion um, saying this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life and following a passion I think that was the hardest thing that I've had to do and I think it's quite an achievement being able to get used to the idea of it and I know that it's only going to make me better. Back in the kitchen. I'm thinking snow eggs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. Snow eggs. So a uh, dessert dish but when we're going to make it savoury for breakfast. Oh, okay. Make perfect. it healthy but also yes. up there, you know, a little bit of creativity. And also too, why don't we do poached, uh, a boiled egg, soft boiled, Wrap it in some pastry, some foam, yeah. a bit of molecular gastronomy. Okay. So nice. that's a little bit up there. Yeah. What pastry do you think will be nice? Like Katafi will be too. Yeah, we well, yeah, we'll use Katafi, yeah. yeah. Wrap yeah. it and we, fry it. We can do some mushroom with the other uh, with this with the snow eggs. Yeah, what else mushrooms, you go with? truffles, uh, and spinach. Spinach. All right. Spinach. Yeah. Done. That, yeah. There you go. Okay, okay. Yeah. let's do this. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Ooh, bang let's it do on. this. Let's meet Chef Brad, get to know him a little better. Hi, I'm Brad Walter. Um, I'm a Cert 3 culinary teacher here at Canberra Institute of Technology. Married for 27 years now. I have two children, a son and a daughter. Yeah, and no, I'm crazy about golf. I'm the current B grade champion, so I'm trying to defend my title this year, but we'll see what happens. I sort of fell into cooking um, when I was 17 years of age, and yeah, it's been part of my life ever since. So here at CIT, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of international classes, and I really like that. They're here to learn um, 
I like to know more about the, you know, their nationalities and their favourite things and stuff like that. So it's a, yeah, it's really quite cool. To have two teams and be a leader of a team to go up against Yvonne, I, I think it'll be fun. Um, like most chefs, we're all, we're all pretty competitive and we all think a little bit better. I'm, I'm sort of looking forward to the blooper role if there is going to be any. Obviously, most people want to win, whether it be an individual or a team sport. Everyone has that little bit of competitiveness to win because there's a little bit of that in all of us, like to strive for the best. And I suppose that's the motto in life, really. Strive to do whatever you can do to the best of your ability. And if you give your all, you'll always succeed. Um, I've got Coco and Narian, and um, yeah, I think we work um, really, really well as a team. Team Brad is going to win because uh, we have strong skills. He is a really good leader, and he has led a lot of teams during services, and I'm, I'm looking forward, like, really for us to win it. No? Yeah, me yeah. too, because <laughs> it's a good thing to dream, to win, and there is no harm in that, but we're going to win anyway. Yeah. Let them keep dreaming. We're going to give our best. My name is Carolina, but I go as Coco. I'm 25 years old and I'm from Colombia, from a city called Medellin. It's a small city towards the center of Colombia. <laughs> it's always warm, it's always a spring. I grew up in the same house, like a, since I was little, with my family, my dog, and we are still own the house. <laughs> uh, who taught me how to cook, I will say it started by my grandmother, I used to spend uh, my mom's side grandmother. I used to spend with her many weekends and I used to sit with her in the kitchen listening to music. We used to dance and sing and cook together and I think she teach me like the beginnings. My nana also, my mom. My passion is life itself, like living every moment, um, like every chance you have. So if I have the chance to, to study, um, if life gives me that, I will do it like right away. If it gives me the chance to work and challenge myself, I will do it. If it gives me the chance to travel, I will do it. Like, like living each moment as it best, that's my passion. So I think that, actually I'm, I'm a bit worried Brad might win today. <laughs> Cause he's, he's come up with some pretty good stuff, but I have to say I am gonna win. Yeah, so I think we, um... We should give a good showing today. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get in. I found another thing a little bit difficult to, to peel the eggs. Because oh. it was really delicate, because really it was delicate. really runny inside. Beautiful. That is so nice. Okay, guys. I leave you here. I need to go and steer my mushrooms. Okay, you're going to steer your mushrooms. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't, don't burn them. I just think we. Um, we worked really well together. It was um, it was just a re really nice team effort. Yeah, one side looks like they're sort of. A bit they look a little more stressed, stressed. don't they? Hey, Claudio. Come on, Bye, Jordan, will you? Sure, just watch your hands. Ooh. All right, I'll be dry fingers. Chef Yvonne coaches Sam on working in a confined space. Sometimes there really are too many cooks in the kitchen. Are you backwards? I'm backwards, yes. I normally set it up the other way. I go are you left-handed? I'm not, but this is how I've always done it, so... I was taught by a left-handed person. <laughs> oh, no! As a chef, you get taught not to cross over, but she's a righty, and I got taught by a lefty, so I do a lefty, so start off with dries and wets. So here I am trying to do it, but I kept crossing over, which is extraordinarily inefficient and definitely against the rules of, the, of any kitchen. All cheese or? Okay. So what we need to do is, our second dish was um, poached eggs wrapped in kataki pastry, deep fried and served on a bed of leek. What is the name of the pastry? Katafi. Katafi, okay. Behind you. Where do you want this way? Just here for the moment. Yeah. So what we're going to do is, just a little bit of this katafi. Uh -huh. Like a bear? We're just going to make like ah, a little, okay. like a little nest. Mm -hmm. So to sit, it's probably bit just a little bit too much. So we just need a little bit. Yeah. Just to make, 
Okay, this is getting like there. Like a little bit of... Yeah. Like something little, sort of like this kind? Yeah, yeah so we've got like a little nest, so... Now. A lot of smells we'll going on. We'll eggs. This is so In. good. <laughs> Into, You're having fun there? Into, into our this nest smells here so with our legs. Oh, Just looking for what's like it. That looks really good. <laughs> so, how did you come with this idea? Low the heat. Well, it's... So it doesn't... Tafey, it's one of those pastries you don't see a lot. Yeah. Sam, and now, what did you go to the gym? Maybe you can work out. lots of different... <laughs> lots, lots of different <laughs> uses. So I thought, Tafey pastry, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. How many have we got? Six? That's plenty. Yeah. So we just need to put a little bit of olive oil uh -huh. yeah, on this, which is just yeah, just so a drizzle. So this is going to go also with the leek? With leek, yeah. So we're going to fry some leeks. It was funny because uh, sometimes we kind of interact with the others. So how are you doing? Oh, we're going to smash this. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> things like that. And Maybe only that much parsley, I reckon. That's the dill, and then you can add the truffle. How are you going? Uh, ready to cook castillas? Yes, chef. How are you looking, Brad? Hey. How are you looking? Yeah, yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys going? I'm going excellent, thanks. You want to this one? Well, I'm going to actually... Well, I'm just going to get two of these going. Yep. Uh, I reckon that's enough with the grated. Have you got the grated cheese in there as well? The cheddar. Let's just leave it. We'll have yeah. mix it all up, and we'll have a little taste. Yes, chef. Looks like Team Brad are having trouble getting at some of their ingredients. Oh my goodness! Give me your hard time. Also. And there was the time when we couldn't open the lid of the oh. spinach. I hate so, that. Yeah. I couldn't open that lid and, then and I, I was like... I my muscles. To <laughs> yeah. I, I was just was trying to you. make you show off. Oh, you know, yeah. your wife is going to see this. <laughs> now you're making me proud. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this to see if we need more Asparagus salt Asparagus soldiers. Uh -huh. So we can finish it. Can you also try it, please? So it is. It's always good, as I can opinion. I think it needs more salt <laughs> and pepper. Yeah, it needs more salt. And maybe a little bit more fine. We're gonna blend it more yes. right. So. So. Okay, perfect. Yeah. The small salt enough. and pepper. You want it like really well um, seasoned. Yeah. Because it's all about the flavor, right? It's not just pretty, it's also yeah, the flavor. I know. <laughs> The teams are scrambling now. We're down to our last few seconds. It's a race to get everything into place before it's too late. Five, four, three, two, and one. Time's up. Team Brad and Yvonne have put everything into today's cook-off, but will it be enough to impress our judges? All right, well, let's uh, go to the judges and see how they went. Mel. So we'll start with the Von. I really like the asparagus was nice. Um, the sauce was good, but I feel like it needed a little bit more acidity. Um, Brad, the snow egg, I feel like the egg was overly sweet and then the mushrooms were quite under seasoned. But the Qatafi egg was my favourite. It was really, really delicious. 13, 13 for both. 13 for both? Yeah. Oh, neck and neck after. <laughs> Early start. Shelley, starting with the asparagus. Yeah, so the asparagus I thought was really unusual concept. Um, crumbing the asparagus, deep frying it, that was really interesting. Um, it could have done with a little bit more seasoning for me. And the quesadilla um, was a really nice flavour. I really liked the chilli in it. The chilli was really good. Brad's team, uh, we had the... What do we have? The snow, snow egg. egg. The snow egg. Yeah, which was a really unusual concept. I really thought that was good. Nice to see something a bit different. Um, and the katafi pastry, the egg was cooked beautifully. That was my dish of the day as well. That was beautiful. Well done. And how did you think that they adhered to the, the theme of the breakfast and use of the truffles? Yeah, really good. Um, some of the truffles, I'd like to always see a bit more raw truffle shaved over the top because that's, you know, the way it should be. Um, so maybe a little bit more truffle next time. 
Um, but the, it was good to see some unusual breakfast dishes too, not just the traditional. It's good. And how, how about numbers out of 20? Uh, numbers, I scored 14, uh, 14 for Yvonne's and 14 and a half for Brad's team. Ooh, really is Very tight. There. There's a lot of yeah. tension in the room, I can feel it. It's <laughs> thick as a sweet egg. All right, and Andrew? So the asparagus for me was, um, the asparagus was really crunchy and I really enjoyed that. Probably for me a little bit more flavour, but still, it was a really nice dish. Um, after that we had the um, casadella. Um, for me, total vote, 14 and 20. My absolute um, favourite dish, like all of ours, um, was the pastry. Um, the, the egg, the, um, the texture, the combination of the flavours were um, really, 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 really nice and probably um, certainly my favourite dish as well and I gave a total of 14. It is Yvonne's team with 41 and Brad with 41.5. Congratulations. <laughs> Sensational effort from both teams. We'll be back with a whole new set of ingredients and challenges and even judges next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> feel really excited that we won today. Um, we did our best, but it was like half mark. So the other dishes were really delicious also. So I think, I think uh, both teams made the best effort. And since it's the first episode, I think we did really good. We gave our big best shot, and I know the other team also gave their best shot, and it was just half mark difference. Just so half. we both did good, and we really love what the outcome came. We had the dish of the day with our Katafi. Um, poached egg with um, truffle foam. They felt that the sabi was under seasoned, but I didn't, so I would leave it the same. The comments judges were fair at the end of the day. You know, uh, in competitions like this, you always fear that you're going to over season, under season. We worked really well together. It was um, it was just a re really nice team effort, and um, they uh, they did a very good job. We're really proud for what we did. Mm.